Are we recording? Fucking hell, we're recording. <laughs> what happened next to the wheel? <coughs> it's getting a bit chilly. I used to have my thermometer, but it's gone. Oh no, we have the, the, the dickhead one, don't we? Oh, four degrees. Fucking wankers. Right then. <laughs> Someone needs to do something about this weather. Uh, Lord, aha, Lord. So a lot of people, a few people, a lot of people have been asking actually. I say a lot. Oh, folks. Ah, Lord, what the fuck is Lord? My upper back, I mean, I've always been mad about it because it has fat rolls on it, but it's actually really incredible because, I mean, if I'm able to. Um. You might hear it when they talk about dinos, you might talk about, hear it when they talk about your break-ins and this and that and lugging the engine and so on. What is load? So we talk about uh, torque, we talk about forces, we talk about pressures, which is a force applied to a surface area. So you'll say you have a piston and there's a boom, there's a combustion event, an ignition, and the temperature rise makes the pressure go up. Gives all it shares all that energy out to the atoms. The atoms can race around like knobheads and push down on your piston, which is pressure. Our piston has a surface area and it's a force applied to it. That then transfers through our con rod, and because it's all at a dodgy angle and all the rest of it, um, you turn that linear motion into torque. And torque is a force around the pivotal centre, so it's a force that's pushing like that as it goes around. And you can have multiple points if you want to do that, so you can have two cylinders go like that. Regardless. Uh, and this torque is then transferred through your transmission, through chains, brockets, blah blah blah, whatever you've got, maybe a shaft drive, to your rear wheel, and your rear wheel applies a torque to the floor, and so on and so on and so on, and then you whiz along having great fun. Um, but we're talking about a lot of pushing forces here, we're talking about pressure, we're talking about torque, a twisting force, a, t a twisting torque. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, what is load? So load is the opposite to that. It is, a, it is a force, or it can be seen as a force, that resists all of this, right? So friction is a, a resistance. It's not a force per se, but it is a resistance. Rolling road resistance is basically the friction and the mass of the bike sat on top of that, which is to do with your coefficient of friction, the force applied, and so on. Um, so wind resistance, air resistance, stuff like that, viscosity of fluids, uh, shear, stuff like that, these are all um, resistance forces. These are all loads basically, they're just resistance forces. So you have your 200 horsepower going like that on your Panangali just to you know try and scare the neighbours and then you've got everything that's butting, working against it, the reaction force. So load is just anything that resists that. Just anything full stop. Um, so when you look at like dinos and stuff, you cannot have a dino, you cannot just have a bike just spinning nothing. It will spin to ridiculous speeds because there's no load on the engine. Because we need to work out how much work has been done to give us horsepower. So we have to apply a load to that. In a sense, it's like just spinning something in free space. You just can't have it spinning there because it'll just fucking carry on spinning there. Apart from the little losses like friction and a bit of air resistance. If you do it in space, it'll just keep on spinning there forever unless there is some friction involved. Um, you know, so generally dynos, it ranges, but a, a nice safe number is about 15%. you got 15%, it means that the engine can easily spool up um, and you get a nice smooth run out of it. The difference with dynos and the difference with reality is there is no air resistance. And you might think that little fucking dickhead fan blowing at your radiators to try and cool them down is air resistance. Well, it's not, because it's not resisting that rear wheel moving. Is The fact is that the bike is stood still and the air's blasting it. And it is pushing it into the dyno drum ever so slightly. But it's nothing like the wind resistance of when you're ploughing along at 200 mile an hour. And the thing is, them fans are not, um, they're not linear. So when you start to speed up... The fan doesn't start to speed up. If you, or maybe some of them do, and some of the more, not all the ones I've seen, but maybe some of the more modern systems because of the increase in waste heat and stuff. But um, 
this is why dino runs are usually quite short so you don't basically cook everything you would basically need a wind tunnel that can have you know air velocities up to 200 miles an hour or something like that to basically um simulate exactly what's going on you know and hence why they do that you know they stick these bikes in wind tunnels with their stationary and fixed and then they just look at the airstream that runs over them where dinos were just testing power but we need some kind of load and this is where the whole brake thing comes from um, there is a dickhead video going around on Facebook, I don't know if it's on YouTube as well, but there's these guys who are spinning up a H2R up to 436 kilometers an hour or something. When you've got no load on an engine like that and you basically you just spec everything out you can change sprockets and stuff because there's no resistance you can fucking get an engine to do them <laughs> you know what i mean it, it, you are limited by the rpm limits and your entire transmission including your final drive wheel diameter and stuff tire diameter and stuff like that um so you can go a bit silly get ridiculous numbers there approximate numbers because that bike isn't fucking moving so you can't say it's going 450 kilometers or 8000 miles an hour because it's not going fucking anywhere it's not covering any ground at all so yeah they're just that's just bullshit but load is any kind of resistance and the biggest one and I was talking to Isaac and his bum chums about this is that if you've got uh an R1 or anything that's going at 200 miles an hour and it has 200 horsepower to do that and you are topped out you're at, you know you just before red line just before the limiter kicks in then you in a sense have 200 horsepowers worth it's lower than that because there are friction uh, there is friction losses and stuff like that within the bike itself, but also with the ground you're rolling road resistance and stuff like that. But it, them numbers are quite fractionally small compared to the wind resistance. So your air resistance here could be thought of as being 200 horsepower's worth of air blasting at you. It's resisting this, and that's why you stop at that speed. This is why you can't just keep on adding gears. This is why bikes don't have 8, 20, 30, 40, 50 gears. Because you've only got a set amount of power, and when you have more and more gears, you're just divvying up the, 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 you're just divvying up, like a cake in a sense. You could have a cake with six slices, or you could have a cake with 50 slices. You're still going to have that same set amount of power same with push bikes you can have five speed push bikes and you can have 28 speed push push bikes that 28 speed push bike is not going to make you go any faster top speed wise unless you've got the legs to push you and again the legs to push you comes from the power you know the power you can create hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit